Hi, I'm Matt and welcome back to Soil Lab. Are you currently vermicomposting? Do you use worm castings in your garden? Do you just want to learn more about the nutrient value in these? Then follow along. So as we look into this, this most recent study that we've completed here at Soil Lab, I'd like to just give you an overview of what we did and then we'll talk about what we found. We started this experiment with three replications of our finished vermicompost. We sent three separate samples off to the MySoil testing lab for analysis. Now I know many of us may want to use the leachate as a liquid fertilizer. We sent that leachate off to the, to the lab as well using our ion exchange resin capsules as the foundation for our data collection. So when it got to the lab and got analyzed, we got the results, and that's what we're going to dive into now. So let's first start off by looking at three replications of the vermicompost itself. So we'll go ahead and just select these from our MySoil dashboard. You can see those are our three replications of the vermicompost itself. So this is the actual physical compost that we added directly to our MySoil test kits. We'll go ahead and compare those selected samples. And what I want us to really notice here or focus on here is there's a pretty large lack of variability sample to sample. So in general, we see that there's very little nitrogen, um, but also very little variability amongst these nutrients. Now, where do we see some variability? We see it in zinc and boron, where we have one small outlier each. Now, although those look like big differences, recognize that's from 0.003 to 0.006 parts per million of boron difference and very similar numbers to the zinc. So when I ran the statistical analysis, these were all statistically the same, even though there were slight differences numerically. Now let's go ahead and go back and see if we can say the same for the leachate. So we'll go ahead and deselect those samples, select our leachate, and compare those. And what we're going to see here is the same trend with maybe even a bit more consistency. Um, so statistically, all of these were the same as well. So from a sampling standpoint, I felt great about our sampling. I feel great about our data sets. So let's go ahead and compare our vermicompost or our worm castings to the leachate that came through it and see what we learned. So we'll again deselect these and just choose rep two of each. And we're going to compare those selected samples. So the first thing we notice as we look through here and we're looking at our primary macronutrients of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium is that there's very little nitrogen both in the compost and in the leachate. Um, why? Well, there could be several reasons, but my best guess is because this is such a living compost, most of that nitrogen is not in the ammonical form or the nitrate form, so we're not detecting it. Most of that nitrogen, whether it's nitrate or ammonium, is going to be tied up and built into a protein inside of those bacteria, inside of the fungi, and inside of our red wigglers. So very little nitrogen available today, but that doesn't mean it won't become available tomorrow. As we look at our phosphorus and potassium, you see we have adequate amounts or a surplus of those um, for a vegetable garden, but we did see a pretty large decrease in phosphorus in the leachate. Well, why would there be less phosphorus in the leachate? We find that phosphorus is very immobile in the soil. And so what happened is the small amount of soluble phosphorus was leached through. But that means that quite a bit of phos still remains in that compost. Now with the potassium, it's pretty mobile and there were off the chart amounts in both the leachate and in the vermicompost. So if you're looking for a potassium fertilizer source or a potassium nutrient source, the vermicompost or the leachate would be a great choice for you. So as we move forward, we see sulfate. And sulfate levels were about the same in both the compost and the finished leachate. So whether you're using the compost or the leachate as a liquid fertilizer, you're going to be delivering sulfur as sulfate to your crops. We mentioned that phosphorus was immobile in the soil. Well, we have several other immobile elements, and two of those are calcium and magnesium. And as they're immobile in the soil, we see that in the leachate because we have such a reduced level of calcium and magnesium in the leachate. So let's say that you're fighting or you're battling blossom end rot in your tomatoes and you want to pump up the calcium levels to help combat that. In that instance, I'm probably going to go with the finished compost as opposed to the leachate to be sure I'm delivering those higher levels of calcium and magnesium. 
Now you can see a similar trend there with the iron. Iron also being relatively immobile in the soil. So if you're trying to pump up the chlorophyll in your plants, you're trying to get a bump of iron, we probably want to go with the compost as opposed to the leachate. As we look at our other suite of micronutrients, we can see that typically that's going to be in larger quantities in the compost than in the leachate. Um, but again, we still are delivering, albeit maybe at low levels, um, we are delivering micronutrients every time we deliver either the leachate or the finished compost. Um, from a pH standpoint, that's something we often discuss. We did see a more acidic pH in the leachate than we saw in the compost. So if acidifying the soil is a concern to you, maybe focus on using the compost itself as opposed to just purely that leachate. So what's the 10,000 foot view? What are the main takeaways here? Whether you're using the vermicompost or the leachate, this is going to be a fantastic nutrient source for you or a fantastic fertilizer source, whether it's for your house plant or for your garden or lawn. In addition to the nutrient value, this is a living compost. Every time you add this compost or that leachate, you're going to be adding organisms or feeding organisms. Now, you notice I've been saying leachate, not compost tea, and I do that really intentionally. In the leachate, that's not in an aerobic uh, environment where we're introducing oxygen like you would see if you were, quote, brewing uh, a tea. So a little bit different than that leachate. But we've got bacteria fungi, worms, insects, all in this compost, and you're going to be incorporating that life into your garden as well. Well, hopefully you enjoyed learning just a little bit about the nutrient value of both our vermicompost and the leachate through the vermicompost, and you can use this data to help drive decisions in your lawn and your garden. I encourage all of you to start using that household waste stream and vermicomposting on your own or composting outdoor on your own and keeping that on site and incorporating that into your gardening or your lawn maintenance. Please like, subscribe, and most importantly, comment below if you've enjoyed this, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the lab.